the beginning of the project, uh, the way the project came about is that uh, uh, UN Environment has been promoting integrated water resource management for a long time in Sudan. Um, and the government of North Darfur invited us to demonstrate what that actually means in practice. So how do you take concepts and approaches and apply them in practice? So that was really the beginning of the project. And at the same time, it was an opportunity to look at um, using natural resources and the rehabilitation of natural resources as a means to improving livelihoods. So it was a combination of two things, um, improving livelihoods and uh, uh, disaster resilience at the local level with demonstrating integrated water resource management at a higher level. The challenge at the beginning of the project is that we had many stakeholder groups involved. Not all of them had the same understanding of what the project was aiming to do or the objectives of the project. So we had to really take it slowly in the beginning to have a conversation with everybody to allow space and time to understand uh, different views and priorities from all stakeholders. Um, and that really helped get people on the same page. It took a long time, but uh, eventually we got there and uh, it's the only way um, to get people fully invested in, in what you're trying to do. Scarcity in natural resources and degradation drives conflict or contributes to conflict and uh, disagreements between groups, especially that we have a limited resource base. Um, but they're also victims of the conflict in terms of when governance is disrupted, when land becomes inaccessible, when there is no longer a um, oversight over how natural resources are used, then it becomes a very extractive relationship. When livelihoods suffer, it also becomes an extractive relationship with natural resources because people are struggling to make ends meet and sometimes the only way to do that is through wood collection for fuel wood and for charcoal. So it was very interesting to do, uh, to work with communities to get them to establish a three-dimensional to scale model of their landscape uh, because it m made communities from different parts of the wedi or catchment in which we were working come together and define their own resource base and their own environmental problems. And through conversations between different communities, new things come to light. So communities get to know each other on a different level. Uh, through their shared natural uh, resources. So when they constructed this map together, uh, they then presented it to governments and uh, it, it was fascinating to see government's reaction because it was, a, a, it was an appreciation of uh, the knowledge at the community level, but also it, was, it showed that there is perhaps less awareness at government level of the full value of what communities have to contribute in terms of understanding of their local environment. Long-term benefits and sustainability come from people being convinced that this works. Um, and to be convinced that this works, you have to see it in practice. Uh, so through demonstrating different techniques and practices at the local level, farmers then see for themselves whether this technique works or doesn't, whether it brings benefits or doesn't. Um, and then it's up to them to take it up, replicate, share with others. Uh, we found in the project that there's been between 68 to 84 percent uptake of the techniques demonstrated. So that speaks to how farmers perceive the value of the demonstrations at the local level. In terms of government buy-in, um, again, it, individuals are not going to be convinced unless it brings benefits. So by involving government very closely in all activities of the project, in terms of technical input, oversight, visiting the areas, speaking to communities, looking at how the project and its activities have brought about change over time was really the convincing factor. It wasn't anything that we said, it wasn't anything that our implementing partners said, it was really being convinced through seeing. The project really worked on three levels. The project worked at the community level through uh, an NGO implementing partner called Practical Action, which is an international NGO. And we worked in 34 villages. Uh, and at that level, it's, um, it's showing, not telling. So it's setting up demonstrations at the local level uh, for uptake and for replication. Uh, the second component of the project was to establish a, a catchment management system for, uh, for the Wedi. 
And we did that, we started to do that through establishing a forum. That, so a system means you have to connect between the different component parts of the system. Natural resource referees, so to speak, which are governments to the table, as well as communities, so that you have a joint conversation about what happens in terms of natural water and natural resource management. So the project established a forum or helped local partners to establish a forum um, under the auspices of the Ministry of Agriculture, the State Ministry of Agriculture. And this forum brings different government sectors together um, and links them with communities from the project area. Under the first phase of the project, this was set up as a, I'm not going to say trial, but as a smaller version of what it can be. Uh, in a second phase, it's, uh, we're going to be looking at working with government to develop this forum and to make this forum more representative of wider resource users in the catchment and um, to really build the capacity of the forum. There are certain things that you're not going to see changes in the short term. Some things are by nature longer term interventions. For example, reforestation. Reforestation is not something that you're going to have uh, immediate wins in two, three years. So a two, three year project, is, is it's difficult to see returns on investment in terms of reforestation. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing it, but you just have to adjust your perspective because that's a longer term intervention. There are shorter term things that you can do where you see, uh, where you see results. So for instance, water harvesting, improved rainwater harvesting. These are things where we saw immediate results whether on a small scale or a larger scale, small scale establishing crescent-shaped terraces. This is something that farmers can very easily do. They can rebuild build them from season to season and they have an impact on local production. The larger interventions would be water spreading weirs and these are maybe beyond the capacity of communities to implement, but this is something that we demonstrate the process. It's not just about the, the weir or the, the water spreading structure, it's about the process of establishing it and getting communities to participate and siting it and just making sure it's done properly from planning to implementation to management. Uh, and there you see immediate, immediate uh, impacts. So the weirs that were constructed under the project are now irrigating 4,000 hectares of land and about 30,000 people are benefiting directly from this project. That's not to mention the thousands of people who are benefiting indirectly through casual labor or through engagement in the market. This project is supposed to be a demonstration project. So it is meant to be communicated. It is there to be seen, to be learned from, from its successes and from its failures. You learn as much from failure as you do from success. So in the next phase of the project, so we did that in the first phase, but I think in the next phase we do need a more concerted effort, it is now a standalone output of the project, of the next phase of the project, to look at how best to communicate the processes and the lessons coming out of the project to different stakeholder groups in Sudan, be it government, in different states, uh, UN agencies, NGOs, other development actors. My desire for the second phase of the project is to continue to build on the strong foundation of relationships that have been either established or made stronger in the first four years of the project because I believe that that is really the foundation of the success of the project. Without that, without having the different communities of practice stakeholders working together in North Darfur, I don't think that, uh, that you can really uh, move forward the agenda on natural resource restoration and livelihoods improvement. Maybe on a final note, I would say that uh, um, the project was a real opportunity to show how through focusing on rehabilitation of natural resources and land, you can improve livelihoods and you can protect against uh, disasters. So you make communities more resilient by focusing on the natural resource base on which they're dependent. Mm -hmm.